Many of you who follow the channel are aware of the nasty and evil cousin of multiple sclerosis, NMOSD, or Neuromyelitis Optica Spectrum Disorder. This wicked condition is very different than MS, and fortunately, over the last several years, we have developed multiple disease-modifying therapies to treat NMOSD. In this video, I am delighted to bring to you an update on all of the disease-modifying therapies to treat NMOSD in 2024. Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Howdy, and thanks for learning about NMOSD with me, Aaron Boster. In today's video, I want to teach you about the recent development of several medicines to treat NMOSD, disease-modifying therapies. Now, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder is a nasty cousin of multiple sclerosis, where people have attacks of optic neuritis and transverse myelitis. Different from MS, however, those attacks tend to be rather severe, and without intervention, people may very much be left with significant neurological disability. So why not just use the MS disease-modifying therapies to treat NMO? Because it doesn't work. We have tried Limtrada, Tysabri, we've tried Gelinia, Tecfidera, and Copaxone, and they have all failed to slow down the attacks of NMOSD. Even worse, when someone uses an interferon beta product, it makes NMO worse. That's right, using Plegardy, Avonex, Rebif, Extavia, and Beta Seron all result in NMOSD patients having more attacks, bad news bears. Unlike MS, NMOSD does not have PIRA, or progression which is independent from relapses. In English, they don't get worse between attacks. And so the theme of NMO disease-modifying therapies is a zero-tolerance policy for attacks. This is accomplished with several different mechanisms. Some of them mirror what we do in MS, some of them are dramatically different. The styles that you'll see I talk about include, number one, pan-immunosuppression, where we just try to dampen the entire immune system. Two, impacting the B cells that are making the naughty autoantibodies. Three, attacking the complement system, which is one of the immune processes that leads to cell damage in NMO. And lastly, dampening down an immune marker called IL-6. So grab a pen and paper and let's jump in. Let's start off with some NMO vocab. These are words that I want you to know so that you better understand the way these drugs work when I talk about them in a few minutes. The first vocab word is the aquaporin-4 IgG, or the aquaporin-4 antibody. NMOSD is an autoantibody condition, and the antibody which is attacking you is the aquaporin-4 IgG. The second vocab word to learn about is astrocyte. An astrocyte is the primary target of that autoantibody. Astrocytes are cells that live in the brain. They're not neurons that send messages. They're not oligodendrocytes that provide myelin. They are support structure cells, and they are the primary target in NMOSD. The third vocab word is complement. Complement is part of the innate immune response, and it is involved in direct damage to the astrocyte. Complement forms a structure called MAC, M-A-C, which literally punches a hole in the astrocyte and causes the cell to die. And so complement destroys astrocytes in NMOSD. The fourth vocab word is IL-6. Now, IL-6 is an immune mediator. It is significantly elevated in patients with NMOSD, and it also causes astrocyte damage. The last vocab word to learn about is something called a bystander cell. This is a cell which is sitting next to the astrocyte. So when the astrocyte gets damaged, it takes damage secondarily. It's a bystander cell. And in NMOSD, there are many important cells that are damaged as bystander cells. These include oligodendrocytes, which cause demyelination, which leads to axonal injury, and ultimately neuronal loss. Okay, we've got our vocab words in mind. Now let's use them to understand the pathophysiology of NMOSD. That's a very nerdy way of saying, let's use them to understand exactly how damage occurs in this condition. For starters, in the bloodstream, Naughty B cells make a naughty autoantibody. 
the aquaporin-4 IgG that we talked about. So now you have these autoantibodies, which are made by B cells in the bloodstream. The next step is those autoantibodies, the aquaporin-4 IgG, they leave the bloodstream and they cross into the central compartment, into the central nervous system. There they will see their primary target, the astrocytes that we talked about, and the antibodies will bind to those astrocytes. That causes three bad things to happen. Number one, the antibody itself can damage the astrocyte. Number two, the antibody can call in complement, which will punch holes in the astrocyte through that MAC complex that I mentioned and cause damage to the astrocyte. And number three, the inflammatory milieu rises and you trigger all of these innate and adaptive mediators, including IL-6, which can also damage the astrocyte. The result of all of this is that the astrocyte blows up basically, and all the cells near the astrocyte take secondary damage. These are bystander cells, including oligodendrocytes. Now you remember that oligodendrocytes make myelin, and so when they die, they demyelinate the neurons, and then they cause neuronal death. And this is the way that people with NMOSD develop damage. So keeping all this in mind, it will help us understand how we use these NMO medicines to either suppress this entire immune system or target the B cells that are making the autoantibodies, target the complement system, which is damaging the astrocytes, or to dampen IL-6. So let's talk about each in turn. The first category of medicines I like to discuss are panimmunosuppressants. These are medicines that simply dampen down the entire immune response to try to slow down an overly active autoimmune process. There are two drugs. They're both pills. The first one is called mycophenolate. Uh, the trade name is Celsept here in the United States. The second drug is azathioprine, which goes by Imuran. Neither of the medicines are rock star status. They're both considered to be of moderate efficacy. And retrospective data would suggest that mycophenolate works better with a superior relapse rate reduction and has a better side effect profile than Imuran. Now, because both of the medicines take a long time to kick in, we oftentimes will use a bridging therapy strategy where we'll start the drug and we'll start high dose oral steroids to kind of bridge them in. Also, it's very, very common that when you're taking these medicines for NMO, we will additionally take maybe five to 10 milligrams of prednisone, that's a steroid, every single day. That's a combination therapy or stacked immunosuppression to try to amp up the efficacy of these medicines. Now, these are considered old school medicines and they're used less and less often. So let's get into newer medicines that we tend to reach for when treating NMO. Real quick before we go on, if you found some value in this video, do me a solid favor and give the video a thumbs oh, up. Yeah. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you. Now we'll move from panimmunosuppressants to medicines that suppress B cells. Remember in the pathophysiology of NMO, naughty B cells make those autoantibodies. So it makes sense that we could target those B cells and suppress them so that they don't make so many of the autoantibodies. The first drug we'll be talking about, it's definitely the one that I reach for first when treating someone with NMO. Of note, it's not FDA approved here in the United States, but the data would support that it's quite effective. What's the drug? Rituximab or Rituxan. Now Rituximab is also used off-label to treat multiple sclerosis. And so here's one situation where there is a little bit of overlap. Rituximab is an infusion given in the vein and it's taken every six months. So one infusion every six months. It is a monoclonal antibody. So it's a engineered antibody in a laboratory that specifically targets B cells. And so when you infuse it in the body, it goes and it binds to B cells, B cells in the bloodstream and the periphery, and to some extent in the bone marrow. And it knocks down those B cells. And it may inhibit the specific plasma blast B cells, which make those naughty autoantibodies, the aquaporin-4 IgG antibodies. So if you suppress those B cells and you make less autoantibodies, then there's less opportunity to cause NMO attacks. And when we study it, the drug works. We see that NMO patients treated with rituximab have less attacks and their disability they acquire is much less. In fact, some estimates suggest that it's 70 to 90% effective rituxan. So you can see why we use it a lot. 
there's very good data that it is superior to azathioprine, the Imuran that we talked about just a minute ago. Now, when you put someone with NMO on rituximab, we oftentimes will follow certain laboratories to help guide us. We may look at their immunoglobulin levels overall, their antibody levels overall, to make sure those aren't suppressed too much, increasing risk of infection. And we can actually check a marker called uh, CD19, which sometimes teaches us when it's time to redose that rituximab. So rituximab is an excellent drug, oftentimes used first line to treat NMOSD. Keeping on the topic of depleting B cells so that the person makes less autoantibodies, the second medicine we'll be talking about is a B cell depleter, somewhat like rituximab. It's called Uplenza, and it's a twice annual infusion in the vein. It's different than rituximab in two very key ways. Rituximab targets CD20, which covers some of the B cells. Uplenza covers CD19, which covers many more of the B cells. So using Uplenza, you're gonna hit B cells earlier in their life cycle and later in their life cycle, knocking them down more and hopefully thereby having less autoantibodies produced. The second thing which is unique about Uplenza as compared to rituximab is the molecule is humanized. They've manipulated it to make it better tolerated in the human body. Now there was a really big clinical trial that was recently completed called N-Momentum. And in this trial, they pitted Uplenza against placebo. And what they found was a striking difference. So during the trial, the relapse rate for patients taking Uplenza was 12% compared to placebo, which was 39%. So very clearly a highly effective medicine. Now we've been studying the medicine in long-term follow-up. We have four years of data and it appears to remain safe and remain effective. This is an FDA approved therapy to treat NMOSD. We're now going to shift our attention from medicines which deplete B cells to medicines which dampen complement. Remember, I mentioned that when the autoantibody, the aquaporin-4 antibody binds to the astrocyte, it can trigger complement, which is part of the immune system that can punch holes in the astrocyte and cause damage. So the next drug we'll be talking about targets complement and inhibits it. It's called ecluzumab, or the trade name is Solaris and it's a monoclonal antibody. It's also humanized like Uplenza, and it's given in the vein, and it's taken every two weeks. So it's taken very, very frequently, twice a month. And what the drug does is it binds to part of complement and blocks it so that it can't make those MAC molecules and punch holes and kill astrocytes. And the result in doing this is much better NMO outcomes. Now there was a big phase three trial called the PREVENT trial, where they looked at people with NMOSD taking ecolizumab solaris against placebo. And what they found was that the people that took ecolizumab did way, way better. The relapse rate on the ecolizumab treated patients, 3%, compared to 43% in placebo. So a really, really big difference. It was also a very well tolerated drug. One of the things that we discovered is it increases the risk for certain types of infections. And so it's important that people are immunized against meningococcal infection before they start taking this drug. So here is another FDA approved monoclonal antibody to treat NMOSD, taken every two weeks, targeting the complement system. Now, Solaris is an effective medicine, but it's taken every two weeks, which is really, really frequent. And fortunately, there is an extended version of it, so to speak. There's another monoclonal antibody, which was recently developed called Ultimaris. And Ultimaris is kind of like an extended release Solaris, if you will. This is a highly effective medicine that was recently studied in NMOSD. And the patients that were put on it had zero attacks during the entire trial, which is amazing. Also, this medicine is infused in the vein every four or every eight weeks, as opposed to every two weeks with Solaris, which is very, very attractive. Now we turn our attention to medicines which target IL-6. As you recall, IL-6 is an inflammatory mediator which is massively elevated in the setting of NMOSD and leads to damage to the astrocyte. So there are medicines which target that and help the disease. The first one we'll talk about is called sartrelizumab. That's a mouthful. The trade name is Ensprin. Now this is also a humanized monoclonal antibody, but it's not given in the vein. It's taken as a self-injection given once every month. There's been two studies looking at using this medicine. 
The first one looked at the medicine versus placebo, but whatever you were taking before you started, whatever immunosuppressant you were on, you were allowed to stay on it. So you could be on N-spring and on, say, azathioprine, and then be on placebo N-spring and azathioprine. So we were stacking immunosuppression in this first trial called the SKY trial. And as you can imagine, the people that were on the N-spring did way, way better than the people on placebo, reducing relapses by over half. There was a second trial done called the STAR trial. Now in this trial, again, it was N-spring against placebo, but you weren't allowed to stay on any other immunosuppression. So this was just N-spring by itself. And again, the data highly favored the N-spring arm with a relapse rate of 30% compared to 50% in the placebo arm. So this is an excellent monoclonal antibody, which can be taken in the comfort of your home by a self-injection targeting IL-6. Lastly, I would like to talk about a second drug called tocalizumab. This is also a humanized monoclonal antibody. This is also targeting that IL-6 receptor, blocking it up, resulting in decreased IL-6 levels, resulting in less NMO damage. Now, there was a phase two trial called the TANGO trial, where they compared this tocalizumab against azathioprine. And as you can imagine, tocalizumab was far superior. The relapse rate in the tocalizumab arm was 14%, compared to 47% with the azathioprine. So here's another monoclonal antibody, which can help improve NMO, again, by targeting IL-6. If you'd like to learn more about NMOSD, specifically treating attacks, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.